it is time for an experiment. An experiment that actually started during a recent live stream on the Big Clive Live channel when I tried some capacitors, different value capacitors in series with a little 10 watt LED floodlight from CBC. It's a Pro Elec 10 watt floodlight. This is one of these floodlights that uses the uh, chips that are basically all wired in series with current regulating circuitry like this unit that was sent by Michael. And uh, so it uses current regulation and that kind of reacts to the temperature of the LEDs as well. But with these things, they usually grill the LEDs. And as you can see in this one, it's just smoked LEDs. Then they've tracked across and they've blown up and it's caused failures. And these are the lights that when you buy them, and not necessarily this one, but it's probably going to fail quite quickly. But it's the style of light that you buy it, you install it, and it's all hardwired in, and then it fails within a year, and then it forces homeowners to actually start doing more complex electrical work themselves because they can't just change a lamp in it. So they actually have to change the whole fitting, and that introduces its own dangers. I'm not a huge fan of landfill like this, but this is how it is. However, let's see if we can depower it a little bit. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to plug it in and I've got a little arrangement here. I've got this lovely rainbow connector. The neutral come in is going through the blue to the directly to the light. The earth is going directly through the green to the light and the brown live is going through the yellow going via this link which is going to replace the capacitor and then it's going to the light via this wire. So at the moment I've got this link in and I'm going to plug it in. And it's rated 10 watts. Let's see what it actually shows. Quite bright, quite a ferocious little light. 10.7 uh, watts and probably going down. Let's say 10.7. We'll take it at straight as it comes before it starts heating up and self-regulating. So 10.7 watts. And after I've done this, I'm going to clamp this light up here in the bench, somewhere just inside the camera. I've got a light meter here and I'm going to tape it, tape the sensor of it in a fixed position and then I'm going to do the test again. But I probably won't do that in camera. It's not really practical to do it now with the light on and with the light down here. But I shall do it afterwards and then we'll take a look at the results and work out how well it measures in lux, lux per watt. I don't know if that's a great way to, to measure it. I thought lumens would have been better, but lux is what we're measuring. Rightio, first test is complete. We've done at the wire link. The base power is 10.7 watts. Let's pop these little tabs up. So yellow and uh, red go up. The link comes out. Let's put in a one microfarad capacitor. I'm going to have to remember to discharge these. I was trying to find my other little doobie setup, but I couldn't find it. Uh, and it has the discharge resistor built in. Oh, let's actually put these wires in correctly, shall we? Let's uh, bend them a bit like that. So I'm going to have to remember to discharge these, otherwise it's going to be quite zappy. Okay, so that's the one microfarad capacitor is in Sears the light now. It's still pretty good. It's much tamer now. It's now doing 3.7 watts. Let's see, since it's nudging the side, up, upper side, we'll go one microfarad is giving. Make some sure I don't put my hand across that. 3.8 watts. Okay, I could measure. Power factor is probably going to mean constant across this. Okay, that's still pretty bright. That is, shine that across the room, that's still ample light. But that is already more than halved the power dissipation of this. Right, tell you what, let's get something to short this out. Let's get a screwdriver. I think that's shorted, although having said that, I don't really trust that because it's a... Uh, let me find something... Well, I'll just use this metal thing, although no real risks, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's shorted. Let's try the 470 nanofarad now. So I'll plug it in. The power it's showing is... It's still pretty bright, actually. Oh, it's still casting a good amount of light. It's now down to 1.95. Do we say... Yeah, let's make it 1.9... It's... Yeah, 1.9 watts. I'll put that down as. 1.9 watts. That's quite low power. That is going to run super cool for that. 
It's going to run very cool, but as you can see, it's still putting out a decent amount of light. Okay, unplug. Uh, I shall use a pair of scissors to short these out. That's probably best bet because I can bridge across the contacts. Little pop, that's it. Shorted out, I think. I'll find out with my fingers across it. Now we'll go to 330 nanofarad. An unusual value, quite hard to get the 330 nanofarad normally. Quite a good value for some LED lights. So that's the 330 nanofarad, and I plug it in. The power is, say, 1.47, let's say 1.5 watts. Still pretty good. Still casting a good amount of light off to the side. 1.5 watts. I shall short that out. Little pop. It's shorted. Normally I'd recommend putting a resistor across these, like something like a, a 1 meg ohm resistor just tacking, even quarter watt, because it's not seeing the full mains voltage. Now comes uh, 220 nanofarad. Let's see what this is going to be. Notably dimmer again. Still putting out a decent amount of light, not competing with the... Uh, the workshop, the bench lights, but still casting light over a significant distance. That's not bad. It's down to exactly one watt. That's very good. One watt. That's it down to less than a tenth of its original power. Short this out. Little tiny snap, nothing much. The amount of charge left in the capacitor will depend on uh, the point it's turned off in the sine wave. Now let's try 100 nanofarad, and this is starting to get to the point that, you know, I'd expect it to be a half watt or something like that. And it's getting it's getting to the point that it would be okay as a sort of, yeah, it's lit, but it's really what I'd call, it still casts the light, but it's more what I'd call a navigational light, but it's going to last forever. Oh, the hoppy has just stopped measuring it. It's decided that's too low. It's probably below half a watt. Let's make a guess. Let's just call it half a watt from this 0 0.5 watts. Okay. And just for novelty, just to see if it works. I know it works. We tried it on the live stream. Let's do a 47 nanofarad, which is kind of pointless. It's, it's useful for some applications, I suppose, if you want a forever light. But there's the 47 nanofarad. It's not going to measure our... It took a wee while to light up, that means it does have a smoothing capacitor, but it has lit up. And is casting a decent bit of light. You know, it's usable, but it's not really something you'd want to be, I suppose, hold on. Could I read with this light? Oh, you could. Oh, i tell you what. Something else. The light has gone unstable. It's actually flickering. It's not happy with that. Okay, that's interesting. That might be the uh, self-regulating circuitry inside struggling to regulate. I wonder if it's that electronic uh, regulator, other than, you know, not a linear one, but a switching one. Uh, I don't know what the power is. I'll make a wild guess that we're down at, say, 0 0.2 watt. Um, that was unstable, though. I'm kind of tempted to stick the 100 nanofarad in and see if it was stable, because... Uh, I didn't try that off camera. Well, let's try the 22 nanofarad first and see what happens. So 22 nanofarads is minute. This is like leakage type current. Oh, it's still lit. It is still lit. Let me just put that down. Could you read under it? It would be an emergence. It would be a camping level light. It's very low level. Um, but it, it's, it's the sort of thing that if you were using this light somewhere, you could have it switched down to something like that level and it would just basically cast a very slight glow for security reasons, but it's not much. I'll make a wild guess, 0.1 of a watt, it's going to be like, it's going to be low. I just want to try, well tell you what, I shall put that 100 nano in and just see if it is, if it shows that same instability it showed to the 47 nano. I think that just hit its sweet spot, but I could be wrong. Is it stable? I saw a slight flicker there. Hold on. It seems stable, but it's probably on the borderline. 
So 100 nanofarad going to the sort of half watt might be too low. Tell you what then. Right, I'm going to do the uh, Lux tests now. I shall write that in a 0.1 watt. And I'll try these capacitors again, but this time I'm going to uh, clamp this light above the bench. I don't think it's going to be very photogenic. It's going to be time consuming. I'll just fill it in. I'll be back in a moment. One moment, please. The test is complete and here are the results. The illumination at the bench is entirely from the light at the moment. It's actually just running at about 3.8 watts. It's got the one megafarad capacitor in series with it. I've used the vice of knowledge to clamp the light up to the side of the camera, onto the edge of the shelf. Pretty good illumination. It would cause reflections quite badly if you use this just as the sole bench illumination. I normally illuminate it from the back. For consistency, I found the sweet spot underneath for the peak reading and I put some double-sided tape in the back of the light sensor here. This is a generic eBay light sensor. I'm not going to say it's the most accurate in the world. It's very hard to tell. I got two light meters and they both showed different readings. So yeah, you just get what you get, so to speak. It's a good comparison anyway. However, interesting things. When I did the test, I decided, initially I just powered it up briefly with the wire link in 10.7 watts and it was showing 3010 lux. I decided afterwards just to leave it running for a while, so I went and had a bite to eat and once it had heated up the 3010 lux, it was drawing the same power, it dropped 2800 lux. If we work it out at lux per watt, that was about 281 lux per watt, but it dropped to 261 lux per watt. Contrary to that, with the one microfarad capacitor in series, it is running at 3.7 watts. It's reduced very slightly, its power, but it is consistently putting out the same level of illumination. And it's held that, it's been lit for quite some time, so running it at a lower power results in greater efficiency by not allowing it to heat up so much. But the one microfarad gave 3.8 watts, 1,460 lux, which equates to about 384 lux per watt. So it's actually a significant increase in efficiency, definitely, versus when it was actually getting hot and had gone to 261 lux per watt, if that's a useful measurement. I'll let you basically read down the results yourself. Uh, basically, the capacitor values here, the equivalent wattage that it appeared to be, the lux level and the effect of the lux per watt. The takeaway from this is that by the time you get to, say, 470 nanofarad, 2 watts, that's about the peak of efficiency you're going to get. But the 1 microfarad at 3.8 watts, it still gives very good, much better efficiency per watt than the original light on its own. And it runs, I'll just feel it right now, I'll just feel the top, it's stone cold. It runs much cooler and it's going to last a lot longer. So it does work. Adding these capacitors in series with the lamps and dubying it um, has a significant effect. So that was well worth uh, doing. It was a good experiment to try. And... Um, yeah, the results were more or less as expected, but it's nice to know that you can nudge these lights down, increase their lifespan, and maybe make them suit uh, a lower level illumination that is still useful for other applications. But that's a good experiment. That was quite enjoyable.